Hi guys, it's Jamal here. Welcome to another Minecraft mod tutorial. Today I'm going to teach you how to add world generation to your game. So in front of me, I've got three different blocks, which are all the tin all. Now we're going to be generating in all three different um, dimensions. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So if we head over to our bit of everything, um, I'll just close that down. That was from earlier. Um, we're going to actually make our world generation. So let's create a new package called world gen. And I'm going to call it all gen. And this must implement I world generator. Like so. This means that we have to um, add some methods, which is just the one method, which is a generate method. Um, now, what we're going to do is for each of our ores that we're going to generate, we're going to have a different world generator. So, world generators. Private world generator. And I'm going to call it tin underscore overworld. And I'm going to do this, control shift O to import this. I'm going to just copy and paste this for all the different dimensions. Now in a constructor, we're going to just initialize these. So tin underscore overworld is equal to a new world gen mineable. And what we're going to do, a block state. So it's going to be, so it's mod blocks dot or the tin or dot get the default state with property. And we're going to just um, need to put the actual property which is uh, block tin or dot type block count now I'm just going to do eight that's how many blocks are in your vein so if you don't know what a vein is it's like how many blocks are grouped together Now I'll just initialize these. Now in the description you'll find this run generator method which basically handles the generation. Uh, just got to import block pass. Um, all this does is just check it's in the good area so between the max world height. Um, then all you'll do is just generate it so it's quite easy. Um, now what we're going to do is use something known as a switch so we're going to do switch world dot provider dot dimension dot get dimension so we're going to iterate through all the dimensions so what this does it just gets the dimension and we can have different cases so say if doing like if world.provider.getDimension is 0, 1, 2, you just use a switch. So let's say it's 0, which is the overworld. So I'm going to just put a slash slash overworld. What we can do is do this.run generator. The generator is the overworld world random chunk x chunk z chances to spawn. This is how many chances it is to spawn per chunk. For iron, it's 20. The minimum height, so that's how the bottom number that it goes down to. So then maximum height, 64. 64 is like the height when like you start getting grass and dirt and that lot. Um, zero is right from bedrock. So that's what we're going to do for case zero, which is the overworld. Um then if we then we can do case one which is the end um we're going to do this dot run generator uh we're going to do the end the world the random chunk x chunk z chance to spawn 20 0 64. now these might not be correct values for the end because i've never actually generated in the end but um we're going to use these values anyway now, minus 1 
is actually the uh, never. So this dot run generator never world random x z twenty zero sixty four. Now, um, when we use these, these are dimension IDs. These are normal Minecraft ones. But I know that the if you have heard of the Aurora mod, so like the d mining dimension. If you ever use the mining dimension, I know that that is K6 as well. So then you do K6 this dot run generator. So that's if it's 6, but uh, I'm just going to leave that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to want to actually register a world generator. So in the common proxy, we're going to want a public void called initialization. So this is where all the initialization stuff will be held. And what we're going to do is game registry dot register and we're going to register a world generator and it's going to be in new or gen and generation weight is just going to be zero and that's default uh, we said it's going to be called in the init so we're going to do proxy dot init like so and that's practically it Okay, so I found out that to actually get this to generate in the never, we need to set what the predicate is. So in this class, which is the world gen mindable class, on this line, it checks the predicate. Now, if we don't define what a predicate is, it will automatically go to this one, which is basically testing if it's stone, which you don't really want. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to make new classes. I'm going to call it never gen predicate as, and then this is going to implement predicate and i think it's going to be the java one i'm going to just check this so the predicate no it's actually the google predicate so uh, glad i checked so predicate the google predicate now in here we want i block state Control shift O is going to make us want to add our apply method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do if input is not nothing and input dot get block is equal to blocks dot never wrap. And what I might actually do is just return this, like so. Now all this is going to do is um, check if the block's nothing and it's never rack, then it'll be true. You should be able to generate in the never, which means it'll only overwrite the never rack. I'm just going to stick on the end the never uh, predicate. So new never gen predicate. And then this one is new end gen predicate. Like so, which means that it'll now generate in the end and the never. Okay, so the game is loaded up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new world called world gen. We're going to just create it like so. And this world is actually going to have our ore in the world, which is going to be pretty awesome, to be fair. Um, so, let's just see. This is so that, like, your stuff that you've got is actually, you can actually make it without using other mod stuff. Like, it's independent. So, we're just generating our world. And what we can do is we'll go into spectator mode to be able to see everything that's going on so once it's loaded like so so um, I'm just going to turn the difficulty off but as you can see if you go down here 
we can see um, some tin ore right here. So if I go back into creative, oh, that's actually silver. So that's not tin. Sorry, it's because we've got four ore that generates. So F three N, and we're going to look around, see if we can find our lovely tin. That's silver again. And that's tin. What mod is tin from? So that's the funnels tin. I don't know why it doesn't show me. And this is our other tin. So this one is actually our tin. It's just not displaying where it is. But you can tell that that's our tin there. So we can see that it's generated there. So it, there we go. Oh here. Uh, so that's, if I go F3N, that is our tin again. So you can tell because that smelts down into that. So, um, so let's go to the end, which in the end we should hopefully also be able to see the um, or generate. Hopefully, we're in a box. Okay, F three N. Um, this should also generate here. Now, I don't know what Y level we're at. 54, so it should generate. Um, but it's probably not going to be as noticeable. That's generating. Because quite... Oh, there we go. It's really hard to notice. But that is some tin ore right there. So we've just generated in the end and the never. So, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I am out.